争。Welcome to uh, Alps 9 Pro session number three. So, as you may remember, uh, session one, we were talking about how to write an introduction, and last time, how to write a body paragraph. So, for today, the natural conclusion is to write about conclusions. Isn't that a surprise? Well, not really. So, <laughs> that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a look at this now. So let's get underway. So quick review of the previous session. So you may remember we were talking about <clears throat> what do the examiners want exactly? So your ideas must relate or be connected, linked specifically to the question and you have to give an explanation of what your ideas mean and then support them with examples. Now, I shouldn't have to mention this point, but you know, um, today alone, I had some essays sent from a couple of people and they were making very broad statements or claims with no explanation whatsoever. And that's no good. So general format, sentence one, main idea, sentence two, explain it. Sentence three, give an example, and that's it. So, a couple of tips. Now, this shouldn't be, we shouldn't need to say this, but people still keep on adding new information. So, you read the essay, gets to the conclusion, and there's something like, additionally, blah, 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 something new that was not mentioned. Don't do it. A conclusion is meant to be a summary of your main points, your main ideas. So make sure you answer the, the question. Vary your language. That is to say, you have to paraphrase. So it's basically the same as your introduction, but in paraphrase. Don't try and include everything, just your main ideas. And you always have to have one. Must have a conclusion, otherwise it's not an essay. Two sentences will be fine. You can have... Three sentences, it's up to you. Four if you need, but two will be fine. So, linking uh, phrases. Now, we see this again, time and again, in a nutshell, in general, finally, really all that you need. You know, I, I know some, some people don't like to use them because they think it's a, a cliche, but how is it? In conclusion, you are writing a conclusion, so call it so. To conclude, in conclusion, that's it. That's the only two introdu intro introductory or linking phrases that you should use. That's all. In conclusion, as I have said, blah, 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 blah. That'll be fine. So what do we do? Well, hmm. restate the main points of your essay. Vary your vocab. Don't simply copy word for word what you said in your introduction. I have to paraphrase. So all you do is simply go back to the introduction, write it again in paraphrase. Don't simply copy it, just restate it. That will be fine. No need for anything else. Now, should we ask, should we add a recommendation, a prediction? You, you can do. Again, as with all these things, as I, as I say quite often, it depends on how the rubric or the question is worded. Uh, and also, you know, because writing is a process, um, you may or may not have written the essay in such a way that you can add a prediction or a recommendation but uh, if you wish you can do you won't lose marks if you do it's perfectly fine and one main reason why is that um, sometimes uh, you might be a little short of your count you might be a little bit short and you need to get over 250 words so one good way that you can uh, get 
over your score is by simply writing a recommendation. So let's look at some examples now. First, some, some which are good, and then mm, some <laughs> which are terrible. Okay, so you've probably seen this question. It's a pretty, pretty common one. Um, it's about should, should government spend on railway, you know, railways or road, yes or no? So it has been argued, blah, blah, blah. I agree because trains are faster, and second, they're more environmentally friendly. So you can see the paraphrase in green and blue. Trains are faster, improve the journey times. They're more environmentally friendly, less harmful to the environment. Easy, nice and simple. So another good example. Uh, this is one about living in the countryside. Two-part question, what problems, how might they be solved? So it has been argued, okay, more people moving to cities for a better life, mass migration from country to town. So, okay. Government intervention to redistribute wealth, state spending to reduce people's need to relocate. That would do fine. Another good example, this is one about people reading uh, ebooks and um, so on these days. Two part question, what problems, how might they be solved? Main problem, it will put people out of work, cause redundancies in the printing industry, retrain sections of the workforce, initiate retraining in the workplace. So it's the same two ideas. Exactly the same. You paraphrase the topic and you uh, put both your answers to the questions. Another one. Let me just have a quick drink, sorry. Hmm. Some universities now offer their courses on the internet. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I think it is a positive step, a significant beneficial development as online tuition should be cheaper, cheaper tuition costs, and remote learning will have a similar broadening of access. The ability to access university courses remotely are of obvious benefits are less well of people and students in far flung corners of the world. So, pretty straightforward. Now, some bad ones, some bad ones. These are something that um, I've had just this week that have, uh, have popped up in the, the channel and uh, I've been sent these. More people are traveling than ever before. Why and what? So, it is irrefutable. Now, irrefutable means it's not open to interpretation. It's an absolute fact. It's an, an absolute. Well, are you sure? You know, are you sure no one can actually, there's no possible other interpretation? So one, this uh, conclusion is far too short. It doesn't cover any of the points. And it's using an, an absolute, which uh, I would try to always avoid unless you can prove it that it's absolutely true. Another one that's too short. In conclusion, despite some people thinking that workers' appearance is important, it impacts on customers, from my point of view, there's nothing more significant than quality of service. Well, that only mentions one idea and it doesn't, you know, it's a bit short, 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 short. Now, this one was an, an excellent one, <laughs> this one. Uh, so there was no outline in the introduction, two ideas, three ideas. It was basically a list. So as I say, this is as clear as mud. And without showing you the whole of the, of the essay, um, it didn't include all these ideas. 
So in conclusion, I tend to agree with those. So you tend, so do you? I tend to agree with those who think the more you earn the money, uh, the more you are in trouble. Uh, uh, okay, so you will not have more free time. Well, others think that how much more money we make, we can spend more money on our leisure time, even if we take less time on it. Well, you know, if you can tell me what this, what this means, I'll give you a prize, because I have no idea. It's as clear as mud. Well, it, it's as clear as something anyway. So it's not very good. So some good and bad ones. Just again, <clears throat> this is one about is intelligence innate or can it be improved by learning? So in conclusion, although a number of people claims that intelligence cannot be ob obtained, well, it doesn't say cannot be obtained. It's talking about can it be improved? I tend to agree that intelligence is not innate so that you can enhance it. So it only mentions one side. I tend to agree. Well, do you agree? Because I tend to do something is not a directly answering. Okay. In conclusion, now this is a better one. Despite some people believing that a person's intelligence can be improved by learning, my own view is that a person's mental acuities are natural and inherent and cannot be increased by any academic means or methods. I would agree that people can learn and memorize facts, but that is not the same as being intelligent. So without showing you the, the whole of the, of the essay, this covers all these points. We've got a clear opinion. We've got the two. I mean, if, if you saw the whole S, uh, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> if you saw the whole of the essay, you would see how all these points are, are present. So that's pretty good. So most societies have homeless people. Some people think we should give them money. Do you think this is good or not? Okay. In conclusion, in spite of the fact that the most obvious factor of helping homeless people is to spend, well, how can us spending help them is to give money to them is not the only way that should be measured. What does that mean? Is not the only way that should be measured, but what should be measured? And where's the uh, opinion? Okay. In conclusion, <clears throat> despite some believing that giving money to the homeless is a a good act, okay. It often has a negative effect as they spend it on drink and drugs. In my view, the best way is to give to charities that help the homeless as they will spend it on food, clothes, and shelter, etc. So you can see this explains a lot more and it covers all the main ideas and the points. Some more conclusions. So, some people think that parents should not give their children expensive gifts. Do you agree or disagree? So, all in all, well, okay, it should say in conclusion. All in all, purchasing without any consideration on children's presence is not acceptable, so it should be measured by parents. Uh, okay, where's the opinion? Where's the ideas? Okay. A good example. In conclusion, I agree with the view that buying expensive gifts for children should be avoided. I believe that they can be damaging to a child's psychology. Also, it's better to show affection and support because these are immeasurably greater gifts. So if it's too short, if it doesn't begin with in conclusion, if it doesn't have the opinion, the main ideas, then it's no good. Don't do it. So there you go. Thanks very much now. Jump.